Hi guys, this is Josh again with SC2 Strategies. I'm just going to be showing you the uh, trigger setup for the for the video I just made. So this is basically it. I have four triggers. Um, one is the initial, setting all the labels up and everything. The second is the um, what happens when you press left. Second is what happens when you press, or third is what happens when you press right, and the fourth is just for the ready button. I also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven variables. Um, player team selection dialog, that's just the dialog in the background. Um, player team selection integer, it's basically an integer that I set to 0, 1, or negative 1 based on if you're on the left, you're negative 1 in the middle selection part, you're 0, and if you're on the right, you're 1. Um, also, this gets changed completely by 4 it gets plus forward when you lock yourself in so that none of the triggers um, can move you left or right um, and then goes down for when you unready yourself slots um, each label uh, I call the slot so slots 1 through 6 are on the left side 7 through 18 are in the middle and 19 through 24 are on the right hand side slot owned is um, just um, it takes a slot number from here and makes it slot owned based on what your player you are. So player one slot owned, slot owned. Sorry, slot owned index one is the player is the slot that player one is currently in. Slot ready is just um, twelve labels and they're each a certain amount to the right of the slot labels, and they're only located on the left and right hand side, not in the middle. Um, player ready is a boolean for false and true and that's just basically saying is the ready enabled for um, that player in their slot. The ready button um, is just the ready button in the bottom right hand part of the screen. So let's walk through trigger one, the initialization. Um, hide game UI, show menu bar, pretty obvious. Create the dialog, uh, create a modal dialog, 12 by 16, that is a full screen uh, dialog and it, then it sets the dialog to that variable. Sorry, my mouse is a little jumpy. Set last created dialog to be full screen. So, oh, I forgot to mention that um, these, this setup works for any aspect ratio. So it works for a four by three, as you can tell, because all the selection was inside the middle um, four by three aspect ratio of my 16 by nine aspect ratio screen. So no matter what you change, it always it works on any size aspect ratio between uh, four and three, which I call sixteen by tw uh, sixteen to twelve and sixteen to nine. So all standard aspect ratios work. Um, create modal dialogs. Uh, set that dialog to be full screen. Now create the image. This is what I did to create the um, create an image that was sorry sixteen by twelve. I believe no 16 by 9 where the um, 1200 is the 9 and the 20 2133.3333 uh, repeating is the width of a 16 um, sorry a 4 by 3 aspect ratio uh, moved up to a 12 uh, height sort of confusing but you know it works for me and it basically just uses my team selection background .tga file. I don't use DDS files because I don't have a proper converter at the moment. But yes, these these are fairly big files. I believe um, that that picture alone was two megabytes. When uh, compressed, it was six megabytes on my hard drive. Moving on, uh, creating labels. The first one, I do all my label creating in uh, pick each integer because um, my labels are separated by a mathematical difference of the same amount no matter where they are. So 1 to 6 is the slots 1 through 6 that were located at this part of the screen for team 1. And create a label with dimensions 200 by, five, 200 by 50 anchored to center. Always use enter anchored to center um, when you want it to be in, um, based on the center of the screen. So this is what I use to make sure that it's the same for every aspect ratio. Any other one would have a uh, would be in a different location and wouldn't follow the background properly. Um, with an offset of negative 600 and see if you can see this is how I this is how I differentiate the the Y position of each one. So picks an integer, minus is 1 from it, that's just how I set it up. Times 105 because that's the difference in height between each one and negative 145 is the initial offset. 
So mathematically, that's how I set up my labels. You can always do it a different way, and then it slots, set slots, pick the integer um, one through six for the these labels. Um, seven through eighteen, I do the same thing, except for this one, I do slot owned because this sets um, the initial slots in the middle to the slot that each player owns at first. Um, and this does sets also following a mathematical difference of 63 um, because that's the difference for the middle slots as they're closer together. Um, S value battle chat as I did a custom um, text for these and then name of player picked integer minus 6 because it starts at picked integer 7 uh, plus the closing part for the custom script or the custom setup for that. Uh, moving on to 19 to 24 just a duplicate of 1 to 6 except the um, the x or the x value for the starting location is 450 instead of negative 600. Uh, moving on, pick integer one through six. So this is just setting up the um, the ready label locations. So create a label, blah blah blah. Position negative 350, so it's 100 over. This one's also 100 over. Sorry, 150 over. And we you just run it through. I also didn't use a write-out duration for the ready ones so that they pop up instantly, but the um, the player ones do have a write-out duration of 0.5 seconds. Uh, the ready button, created a ready button at this location with button text, let's do this, as you saw, and set ready button, last created uh, dialog item. And lastly, you always have to show player team selection dialog for all players so that this works for everybody. As you can see, I sort of like to organize my uh, my triggers, my trigger actions. I make a, the least amount of trigger actions that I can possibly do. And so really, this is probably the most efficient I could have gotten this. And we're going to move on to the next trigger. Uh, player presses left. So basically what this does is it does an if command. So if you're in the middle, as I said, because player team selection, 0 is equal to the middle. Uh, negative 1 is equal to the left, and positive 1 is equal to the right. So I just used an integer for this. I should have probably used a byte from and from 0 to 2. Um, didn't really feel like it. it. It does take less storage, but I don't really care at this point, because you know what, an integer doesn't take up very much memory. And so what it does is it runs from 1 through 6, and it basically tells you it runs this if player team selection thing again, because this does run 6 times. I only put it up here so that it initially doesn't even run if that's there, not th if um, that isn't equal to zero. It it just um, makes it a little less resource hungry when you are running this trigger. Uh, what it does is it first checks if it's at zero because when it's uh, running it does change it to negative one if it actually goes through. And it checks slot picked integer. So slot picked integer, uh, it runs through one through six. So that's every one on the left, and it checks if that's equal if it's equal to slot owned by players one through twelve. So if it is owned by any of those players, it's going to jump down and put it in the next slot. And if that one's owned, it's going to jump down and put it into the next slot, and repeatedly. So what it does is it sets the slot owned for the triggering player. So that's the slot it was it was in before it hit left. Um, it sets that text is nothing, then it, it changes the what slot it owns to the new slot that it picked, and then it checks, it changes the text of the new slot to the name of trigger and player with the, um, with the change in, sorry, style for the text. And then it sets you, since this is pressing left and you are in the middle, it changes your team selection um, integer to negative one, so that it now knows you're on the left hand side. And what the next one does is, I'm just going to scroll down here, it does the same thing except if you are on the right hand side. 